we're going to look at the vertex angle and isosceles triangle. Well, first of all, what's an isosceles triangle? It is a triangle that has two congruent sides and one other side. Sometimes this third side can actually be congruent, so an isosceles triangle um, could possibly be an equilateral triangle. But typically you just see two equal sides and not the third one. Okay, the vertex angle is the angle that is formed between the two congruent sides. So in this case, Y is our vertex angle. And it has a cool little property. Okay, we know that a triangle's measure adds up to 180 degrees. So if we know that vertex angle, we can actually figure out the other two angles because these two base angles, X and Z, are going to be congruent to each other because they're opposite congruent sides. So let's look at that. Okay, let's say that angle Y is 110 degrees. Okay, if angle Y is 110, that means I have 110 from 180, that's 70 degrees left over. But I'm going to split them equally between these two angles, the base angles, because they're congruent. So 70 divided equally gives me 35 degrees. That means each one of these two angles would measure 35 degrees. And that's how you would work an isosceles triangle and work those three angles. So let's look at it in reverse. Okay, what if we're given one of the base angles? Okay, this time we're given the base angle is 70. Okay, well we know that the other base angle must also be 70. So what's left over for that third vertex angle? Well, 70 plus 70 is 140. So we know we have 180 degrees, so what's left over 180 minus 140 leaves us 40 degrees for our vertex angle. So that's how we would find the vertex angle given one of the base angles. Hope this video is helpful. I'm thinking